Hey guys, it's Evan and Harrison from the Wildlife Brothers and we were out here exploring one of our local parks and we just came across a really awesome species that we want to highlight for you guys. This is the Northern Water Snake. Let's take a look. Northern Water Snake right there. there look at this. Awesome. Alrighty. This little girl is a northern water snake. So we're gonna get her up close for the cameras so you guys can learn all about one of our uh -huh. favorite little snakes. Awesome. Out here. Okay, guys, so we finally have a little northern water snake here. Now it's been a long day of searching, but we finally got this little girl. Now this is the northern water snake. And these guys are one of the most common species of water snakes we have in Pennsylvania and actually one of the largest growing as well. These guys can get regularly around four feet in length, so they're quite a large snake. And one thing that often happens when you come upon these guys is they can be super aggressive. But as you can see, she's being really well behaved for us. Oftentimes these guys will be striking everywhere and trying to musk or poop on you, which happens a lot when you're handling snakes. But this individual is being super calm for us and that is awesome. Now we came across her around a little creek system, and that is where you often find these guys. Their habitat is riparian in nature, meaning that they're living around rivers and streams mostly. So what they will do is they will hang around areas of rocks and trees around the rivers themselves. So where we often find these guys and where we found this little girl was hanging around an area of rocks moving from one little pond to another. Now the reason she will be doing that is something called thermoregulation, which is how reptiles will maintain a proper body temperature. Now the northern water snake, like all reptiles, is an ectotherm, which means she is cold-blooded and therefore incapable of regulating her own body temperature the way a mammal can. So what she will do is she will move from warm areas to cold areas and back again as it suits her needs. So when she's too hot, She'll go under a rock or into the water to cool off, and that helps her maintain her cool body temperature. And when she gets too cold, she'll come right back out and sun on the rocks until she gets back to where she needs to be. Now let's talk about what these guys are actually out here eating. So when we came across her, we had a, she had a little lump in her stomach, so that's either a frog or a fish. These guys will be eating some amphibians out here, like maybe a little pickerel frog, but they're primarily feeding on fish. There are lots of different species out here that these guys will be eating. Sorry about that, she's getting a little bit excited. So they'll be eating minnows or sunfish, all kinds of stuff out here in the creek ecosystems, and that is what they're mostly going to be feeding on. Now, as juveniles, they'll also be eating invertebrates or stuff like that, anything that's small enough for them to overpower. Now, these guys are kind of mid-tier in the trophic levels out here in eastern Pennsylvania, so they do have a number of predators, especially as juveniles. Now, something this size really would only be threatened by maybe a snapping turtle, a common snapping turtle, or a heron, but as juveniles, they'll also fall prey to American bullfrogs, or largemouth bass. Now, they do have a couple of adaptations that help them stay safe out here in the ecosystem and also helps them catch their prey. And the first of those is actually their scale pattern. So these guys have what's called keeled scales. And we'll get you a nice up close look at them in just a little bit. So believe it or not, each individual scale has a little ridge that lines the entire length of it that basically helps water run right off of the scale. So what that does is it allows them to move nice and quickly and efficiently through their aquatic ecosystem. They also have curved teeth. It's difficult to show you because their mouth is shut at the moment, but they have curved teeth. They actually curve in towards the back of her mouth. And what that does is if she gets her jaws around something like a minnow, it stops it from being able to pull forward and escape. It basically keeps it there in her jaws. And the last thing that helps them actually see underwater while they're hunting is what's called a fused eyelid. So basically it's a clear covering that is always over their eyes that kind of acts like a set of goggles. It allows them to see underwater when they're hunting. And of course it's pretty obvious, but you can see that dark brown or gray coloration that really helps her blend in with the rocks where she's living. 
so it helps her deter predators from even seeing her from uh, from the start. Oh no! So she totally musked on she you. She totally musked. You can see it's right up and down my arm there. So why do they do that? So it's actually a type of defense mechanism. It's called musking, and it basically means that she's gonna poop on you. If you work with snakes, they will poop on you. Now, what that's actually gonna do is if a predator has her in their jaws and she, she secretes that foul-smelling substance, chances are the predator tasting that, it's very bitter and it smells awful, they're gonna open their jaws to try and get that scent out, and she's gonna have a chance to escape. So it basically just helps her evade predators. But we wanted to talk to you guys a little bit about these guys and what you should do if you ever see a water snake in the wild. Now these guys are incredible animals. They're super important to the ecosystem. So we don't want you guys to be afraid of water snakes or think of them as evil animals like a lot of people do when they see a snake. Water snakes are fascinating and they have a lot of really cool adaptations that help them to be very productive predators out here. That's right. They're actually going to be taking care of the populations of fish, keeping them in check so that the ecosystem doesn't get oversaturated. And another thing we want to talk to you guys about is can you work with a water snake by yourself? Generally, we'd encourage you guys to see, to see them and respect them from a safe distance. Snakes, especially water snakes, can be very aggressive. And even though they're non-venomous, they do have what's called an anticoagulant in their saliva that will stop your blood from clotting. You can bleed for a long time, up to an hour, if you get a pretty nasty bite from one of these guys. So if you do see them and you're out here exploring, our recommendation is that you see them and respect them from a safe distance. Exactly right. So we are out here catching these guys so we can get them up close for the camera That's to right. show you yep. and really help you guys appreciate how beautiful these animals are. A lot of people really hate snakes, but we absolutely love them and we want you to love them too. But just to give these guys proper respect, if you do see them in the wild, and if you're out here exploring in Pennsylvania, you definitely will, make sure that you're giving these guys the respect they deserve and watch them from a safe distance. Just five feet is more than enough to make these guys comfortable and keep you safe. We're really glad that we were finally able to show you guys the northern water snake. This is actually an episode we've been looking forward to for a very long time. And now that we finally have some warm weather around here, we're glad that we could show you some reptiles. So we hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a lot of really cool projects coming up, more reptiles, more amphibians, and some cool trips planned as well. So be sure to stay tuned and we'll see you guys around.